Welcome to the Box Out Basketball Podcast. Box Out Basketball is a resource for basketball players and coaches. We provide quality and affordable personal training from experienced coaches and players, instructional videos showing you how to improve your game at home, and a podcast that brings together the best basketball minds we can find, giving you guidance as you pursue your basketball goals. If you have found any value from this podcast, please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a review on iTunes. Please share our resources with any player or coach you think could benefit. Links to our website, YouTube channel, social media pages, and contact info is all in the show notes. Enjoy the episode. Here at Box Out Basketball, it's our job to give you the tools. It's your job to use them. Welcome to the Box Out Basketball podcast. I'm Andy Rodman. And I'm Philip Brown. And today we're going to be interviewing uh, Jamal Wilson, uh, who's someone we've met while uh, coaching with the L.A. Clippers yeah, Youth yeah. Development Program. Uh, uh, Jamal has uh, played for the University of California, Merced, and also has a music career that we want to get into. So, uh, how you doing, Jamal? I'm good, man. Hey, hey what's, what's up, doing, bro? Man? It's been a while. It's been a while. It's yes, a long summer, huh? But, uh, yeah, man. So, what you been up to, man? Everything good? Everything's good, man. Um... This summer, working with y'all, uh, and outside of that, just trying to get this this new album right, right. in the studio. You okay. know, the typical uh, what SoundCloud rapper. Yeah. <laughs> trying, to, trying to make it happen. You know? Yeah, yeah. Multitasking. You know, that's what it's about, man. You gotta do what you gotta do to live your dream, though. Oh, man, you can say that. It's <laughs> it's it's a grind, but you know what I mean. I'm sure you guys can relate to it. Like you find like some you enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. You know, so when we would do the camps and like I'd get back to LA at like five and like we'd be on our feet all day and I'd be right. tired but like you know it's like oh I get to go to the studio today so yeah yeah uh, still gotta go go pursue your dream can't be uh, working yeah, eight hours yeah. for somebody else's dream and then not come work on your exactly, own so. exactly exactly so you know it's a figuring out still figuring it out but um I'm finding my way in the music that's so, what's up you know I'm glad people are starting to listen a little bit so yeah, it's cool man yeah, so, um, yeah, we just thought it was it was interesting that you have, you know, this kind of blend of, of experience within sports and within yeah. within mm-hmm. arts. And, you know, I've been in L.A. like six, seven months, Phillips, you know, a few months now. And right. I think one thing we're learning is, like, nobody does one thing, oh, you know. No. <laughs> like, Not for sure. Because, like, sure. we, we kind of, you come up in this, this, you know, you're conditioned to think, like, everybody just has that job, and that's what they do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I have the basketball coaching. I also do comedy. You know, right. Philip is into the acting and also the basketball right. and mm-hmm. modeling, too. You have the music, and I think it's so interesting just to see that, like, you know, everybody has a combination of interests that kind of complement right. each other. Right. I think I think what's more, most important is like there's no there's no what's what's the word I'm looking for? There's no guidelines to this, right? Like there's right. no there's no set protocol on how uh, you're gonna achieve success or mm-hmm. like where you're gonna take things. Like no one knows where we're gonna end up. You know what I mean? So that's why it's like if you got a passion for it, go for it. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and that's kind of like our generation now too. I don't mean to cut you off, but that's kind of like our generation too. Like I know a lot of people that were like a year or two older than Andy and I. Uh, they got out of college with a degree, and the, um, the economy was down, so they couldn't find jobs. Bro. So that spurred it. Like, all right, I got to hustle. I got to go bartend. I got to do this while I'm still looking for right. a job. So that kind of spurred it. The whole uh, our generation having multiple, you know, streams of income right off the bat. So yeah, I mean. The key word you said is hustle, right? So, hustling is is the one thing that should be innate, but it's not innate in, in a lot of people, obviously. But yeah, man, when you combine hustle and you combine passion, mm-hmm. like that can take you into like two or three different professions, you know. So, uh, I just think the key word is passion, man. When, right. you, when you're passionate about something, go for it. If you're passionate about two things, go for it. If you're passionate about three things, go for it, because you just never know, you know what I mean? Like, like I love basketball. I honestly love basketball more than music, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And, like, but pursuing both, you never know. Like, one day I might end up in the front office of a basketball team or in player development, you right. know? Or one day I might win a Grammy, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so you just never know where life is going to take you, but you always want to be prepared, you right. know what I mean? And you always want your options to be, like, catered towards your passion. So, 
you there's know, a I, lot I of crossover too between basketball and entertainment in general where there's oh, music no, or sure. acting there's always you know the basketball players that want to rap mm-hmm. you know and do the acting thing and then there's also the actors and rappers who also want to hoop man so it's very very intertwined and they all hang out outside the yep. court and outside of the studio and stuff so yeah because the thing about it the thing about it is man entertainment can be a really slow slow thing right that's why they intertwine so much that's why like you see so many actors and rappers always playing basketball i was just playing with a um with an actor yesterday i don't know if you know who sterling brown is okay yeah he played uh he played he was in the oj the oj trial the fx thing they had um but yeah like entertainment can be really slow like i know for me like if i'm not if we're just talking about music like if i'm not like recording like there's not much to do like especially if you're not like popping and you got like shows here 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 right. it can be really slow and like you know i got friends in acting and it's like okay you gotta wait to get an audition and if you get an audition you gotta land the part then you gotta wait for the project to be greenlit and so it's like that's why that's part of the reason why i love basketball more because like mm-hmm. i ain't gotta wait for that like i can just go right up to la fitness <laughs> and get and hoop, the game you know yeah. what i mean so <laughs> you know but they definitely like intertwine they overlap um and i and at least for me they go together right so. they do. i mean i'm finding you know and i've always thought that the lessons you learn in sports uh, translate to every area of oh, your life because sure. you are learning about work ethic how to prepare how to work with others all that stuff and you know ever since i started a career writing and comedy you know i mm-hmm. find like the the discipline and the respect for preparation and all that um has agreed has kind of helped you know help me out in that industry and i think whether it's comedy acting music any type of art i think a lot of people um the discipline and right. the, the work yeah, side of it is, is lost yeah. on people because they think oh I'm just gonna take a walk and wait for inspiration to hit me (laughs) whatever but to be a good artist you know you need to dedicate time Time. you need to be disciplined you need to be prepared and you need to you know have a regimen to do that so how has your experience in basketball you know helped you become a better musician um uh, let me see uh I would say what basketball has taught me in terms of like what I can take with music is the big word is patience um it's taught me a ton of patience uh the music industry you just you need so much patience especially when you don't know the right people and you're still trying to figure it out uh but yeah basketball just even the little things right like let's say if I'm running a set right and I'm the point guard and uh, we're hitting the second option on this play, right? And the first option comes open, and, like, you don't hit. You don't hit him, right? right? You wait for him to cut through, and then you find the second option to make mm-hmm. the play happen. Uh, little things like that uh, I take with me because I don't know for you know other people, but for me, that matters. You know what I mean? It teaches you patience, and in the music industry, uh, patience is vital. You know what I mean? Like, even down to, like, if I go to record, like, I think I'm supposed to go to record tonight. And, like, I'm with the en- I'm with my engineer, and uh, you know my, my part is done. Like I come in the studio, I lay down what I gotta lay down. That takes about like ten to fifteen minutes. But for my engineer to like mix the record, then then like if he can master it, he masters it. That's like a three or four hour process. Right. So or it can be. So um, yeah, I think basketball has taught me patience more than anything for sure. And you got to work with that engineer too. Like a lot of artists oh, feel like it's like you're on your own, but no, you're going to have to work with other people, which is another thing you learn in oh, sports. Oh yeah. 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 Um, I think, I think that's one of the things that artists struggle with mm-hmm. because as an artist, when we come up, it's like, okay, I want to be a rapper. Like, I got bars. I'm nice. Mm-hmm. You quickly realize that that's not enough, and you can't do it by yourself, right? right. Like, you can't. You're going to need somebody to engineer it. Not only that, you're going to need somebody who can, like, push the record out. You're going to need somebody else to believe in you and take a chance in you. Mm-hmm. And, like, eventually you're going to need someone to put money behind it. So, like, at the end of the day, for sure, man, you got to know how to work with people. I think that's one of the great things the Clippers have taught me uh, through working with youth, youth basketball with the Clippers and working with uh, the community relations mm-hmm. uh, department. 
you know, you just come into contact with like so many different kind of people. Like, right. Just you have to learn how to deal with all kind of personalities, and so uh, yeah, working together, working with other people is definitely something that uh, it's got to be a good trait you got to have, man, in order to make it not just in music but pretty much in life. I think so. Mm. So let's get to you know when you know either when you were a kid or a teenager or whenever mm-hmm. just when you know when did you realize that you you know had a passion for the game of basketball and wanted to take it seriously and just kind of what was your oh. your path coming up? Uh, well, with basketball, when did you start playing? Oh, I started playing like at four. four. I, yeah, from you what I was told. Oh, my mom and my dad. Man. Yeah. So uh, my mom. She's all world in basketball. Like she went to Compton High. She was all state. Uh, she got a scholarship to San Jose State University. Last I checked, I think she's sixth all time in scoring at San Jose State. Yeah. Uh, my dad played at Cal Poly Pomona, so uh, I didn't really have a choice. Right. Like, my mom used to like she used to do these open runs in Cypress and Long Beach, um, and she used to just take me with her, and like I just fell in love with it since then, mm-hmm. and. Um, yeah, it was it was always there for me, man. It was always there for me. Growing up, it was school and basketball. You know, music was like my passion that I didn't really pursue because it was like basketball school, basketball school. And um yeah, I started playing like AAU and then I got to the ninth grade, um, at Dorsey High School. And uh, yeah, I was supposed to play far soft, and then I tried out, and then they said, "Oh no, you know you're gonna play JV," and so I played a year of JV, and then I played my last three years at varsity, and um, uh, at that point it was it was kind of like a crossroads after the, after uh, my senior year of high school because it was like uh, I couldn't really see basketball going anywhere, mm-hmm. but I loved it. And so, you know, I had schools that I could have went to. Like, I could have went to Whittier off of basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, but I decided to go with uh, UC Merced because it was no pressure to, like, play basketball. Because I wasn't sure if I still loved the game. Right. So I wanted to go to a school where it was like, okay, if I don't want to play basketball anymore, I could still be in school, you know. Mm-hmm. So I get to UC Merced. Um, with my brother actually and my brother twin was a brother. twin brother there you go <laughs> and he's the same as me like we're both very passionate about basketball we still play it every day and he actually played my freshman year and I did it mm-hmm. and so like just watching him there I was like oh my god like this is killing me like I have to play next year yeah, he, ain't, he ain't let you borrow the jersey uh-huh. <laughs> you know so it's a funny story man like the first home game of my freshman year uh, when he was playing and I came to support him or whatever. They were like, hey, we, been to court. <laughs> like we um we had the same we lived in the same dorm and we get back to the dorm room and he has this sign on the door like, Oh go Justin, we love you with like all these hearts on it or whatever <laughs> and I was like, Oh, wow, like right. like you you're getting women off of this, like <laughs> like what am I doing? So but at the end of my freshman year it's just cut for kind of funny how it played out. He kind of like didn't like UC Merced because like Merced is like four hours away from LA. It's the exact opposite. There's no buildings. It's just cows and farmland, and mm-hmm. and, and so he was like, "Nah, I can't do it. I got to go back." And I was like, "Nah, this is kind of growing on me." So right. a little change of pace. There you go. You, you like know it. what I mean? Like like it's it's a, it's a nice contrast. It's a nice mm-hmm. contrast. So he left. And then when I stayed, I was like, okay, I want to try. Like, I want to, if nothing else, I want to see if I can make a college team. Right. And I pretty much made it with ease. And, yeah, did my sophomore year. And then after that, it kind of got hectic because, like, that's, like, around the first time music started kind of, like, picking up for me a little bit. Yeah, popping a little bit. Yeah, and then, like, my drive for it became even more. Like, I only recorded in L.A., so, like, I'll be like, okay, I want to record some new music. I've been writing, you know, instead of, like, studying for midterms. Like, I was on academic probation, like, twice. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that was because, like, instead of, like, studying for midterms, I'd be writing music. So, uh, yeah, after that, I was like, okay, I got to make a decision. Basketball is something I love, but I don't really see a future in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, okay, I got to let it go. At least on the, like, the, like... I guess the semi-professional level or whatever right. and so 
yeah, that was like the last year I start I stopped playing competitively. But like, yeah, I still play every day. I I played this morning actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, still work on it. Uh, it's still a passion of mine. We all played together one time. Oh yeah, man. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the ones down at uh. Where we? Uh, we played three on three too. Center. There you go. We did play three on three. We played we three did on three. three. We did play three on three. Yeah, we got a we got a hoop again, man, for sure. Yeah, no, I think I'm retired, man. I won both of those <laughs> both of those <laughs> days. So you know what's crazy? You had like a foot on everybody who played. It was like me, Jamal, Steve, and Sarah. So y'all had a you. shot on on me. So I don't understand. <laughs> what you mean? Like, I mean, it's easier for shorter people to shoot. Oh, like, what are you first to say? of all, first of all, you you play pro. So, so than, did uh, Steve and uh, Sarah. Yeah, and Ruben too. And Ruben, but, come on. Well, Ruben wasn't come there on. for the ones. No, he, wasn't. he was there yeah. for the three. On three I was saying that one on one, it was like you had. It's tough, man. Like four inches on me and like a foot on everybody else. Yeah, man. You're you're like it was it was tough, but no, nah, that was fun, man. We got <laughs> no, it we was fun. We got a hoop again for sure. Don't retire though. Uh-huh. Don't retire. You know what's crazy? You know how the uh, the two on two joints we did? Did you hear? Uh uh-uh, uh The last one at Westwood, who won? Who won? Who, you and Steve again? Nah, uh, damn, his his name is slipping my mind. It was me and, uh, what's my man that run with Steve? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, 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 Coach Williams. There you go, we won it. And what, the two ball? Yes, <laughs> oh, yes, man. oh, man, oh, man, I did not see that coming. Yeah, and shout out Odin Polonese. <laughs> OP, what up? Yeah, but yeah, we uh we beat Steve and Jessica. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, foot. We had foot on the podcast the other day talking about the M- uh, WNBA. Are you a WNBA fan? Am I? What well, I was talking with um Jessica. We was watching kind of Game Five together through mm-hmm. text. Uh, the Seattle <laughs> talking Storm, trash. Uh, Who just going for? I actually was going for Diana, man. Yeah. Um, oh, Taras, she was too, man. Yeah, but super, oh super. My God. Yeah, I was looking at her numbers and Foot Come pointed on, it man. out. Like she has a career high in assists. She's like seven point one something. Yeah, she's right. Thirty eight. But the the fourth quarter. But she, she has had. Brandon Stewart too. He just passed the ball too. So that's, that's a lot yeah. of her assists going. But it mm-hmm. wasn't like Game mm-hmm. Five in the biggest mm-hmm. of moments when it was time to like against against Tarasi was never lost in the elimination well, game. Right. And it was after she got hit in the face. Yep. Because right. she was, was playing like, before somewhere yeah. she got hit down. She was like starting to get in someone's face, and the refs were telling her back off, yeah. and then she went off. She had like. 15 or 16 in the fourth quarter completely yeah. shut the door mm-hmm. on on um, the Mercury. So, that was impressive to watch, man. So, yeah. prediction, WNBA predictions. Uh, who you got for the championship five game series? Oh, come on, man. Seattle. Huh? Seattle. Oh, Seattle's okay. been the Seattle's <laughs> been the best team all year, man. Right. Um, I'm a Sparks fan. And coming fan. off that performance. Yeah, man. I, I'm a Sparks fan. Seattle got home court though. Uh, there's I don't really see I don't really see nobody beating um Sue Bird or Brianna. I'm this just year. gonna say y'all are lucky Angel McCotry got hurt. Right. That's uh <laughs> Yeah, but it's crazy. I saw her play this year when um when they came to LA and like we had to come back because they were killing us. They mm-hmm. were killing us. Yeah, they were. Yeah. yeah. Relax. Like typical Relax. Atlanta stuff. Relax. Like, they can close it. They can close it. It's not typical Atlanta. That's um, typical Atlanta. What happened typical to women Atlanta. Like the, what the Falcons the, too? Falcons, Braves, Hawks. Falcons, Falcons Braves, you know Hawks. What? I'm not gonna even I'm not gonna even dip into that because I'm not really familiar with football like that. But in terms of like uh I know the ATL and the WNBA is good. I don't know we about are. the NBA. I mean, would you say Trey Young, right? I'm a Trey Young fan. Okay, I'm a Trey Young fan. But so you rock away Quavo and, and Trey Young. <sighs> oh, man, I'm not two even a, I'm not even a Quavo fan like that. You know, he wrote hit and miss with me, but yeah, I'm a I'm a huge Trey Young fan, man. I hope he does well. Okay, okay. I, think, I think he will. I think he will for sure. Uh, yeah, but other than that, you know, you. Schroeder had to get out of there. Schroeder, my dog. Is he? Uh nah, I don't know him like oh, that. Okay. <laughs> nah, I was about to say. nah, I mean I've seen it a couple times. He got the he has the um what's it called? He got the Lambo that's um The Audi. No, he's got a Lambo too that's like uh, a Tron one. So like he has like the um glow in the dark strips on it. So at night like it looks like Tron going down Schroeder? the interstate. Uh, Schroeder had the yeah. Uh, when he was a rookie, I met him in Vegas. Right. Like just walking around trying to find a club to go to. <laughs> and I was out there for the uh, to watch summer league. And like I was like, What's up, man? What's up, man? 
Yeah. yeah. His yeah. accent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I spoke German to him one time. He was like, he was like, oh, yeah, where, where are you from? I was like, yeah, I was born in Germany. He was like, oh, so you speak German. So, you were born in Germany? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You didn't know that? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I spent like the first eight years of my life over there. So, like, I like had like the introduction down. He was like, oh, yeah, where are you from, man? You born in Germany? And I was like, well, that's all I really know how to say. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know yeah. that. You learn something new every day. Did you know he was. Well, obviously. Yeah. I yeah. Did. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. <laughs> Did not know Phil was born in Germany, but yeah, that's what's man. up, man. That's what's up, man. What, what's up with the... Um, what do you think about Prince, man, and John Collins, young bucks coming in there? So we got a super young team, got a new coach. Uh, uh, I think it's obviously going to take a minute. Um, I the saw, East is down, too. LeBron gone, so... How do you think? It'll take two or three years to get right, or...? Yeah, yeah. See, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the East is a down as like people are. Saying. Thank you. They are right. They, they're not. They're not. That's why I'm like it might take two or three years, but I, I could easily see it going longer. Cause like, you know, you got the, you got the Celtics. They're Sixers gonna be coming. Good. The Sixers are coming. I think they got a, a situation at point guard though, uh, with Ben Simmons. I'm not as high on him being the number one point guard on the championship team. Um, but they're going to be good. The Raptors, my pick to come out the East, they're going to be great. What do you think is going to happen with Kawhi, though? So we, we can kind of catch up on all like the NBA news real quick if you want to. Okay, I'm uh, done with So that. what's up with, uh, with Kawhi? You think he's staying after this year? You think he's going to be a good fit for this one year? I think Kawhi coming home. He coming with us. Oh. Clips. So, But you got him playing hard one year and taking the Raptors to the finals. What you telling us? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, I think, you know, he's in a contract year. Yeah. And anybody... That's in the contract year, you know. That's that tip. That's typically when they go hard. Yeah, and then you and factor he had a in year out. He, yeah, he's got to prove himself, man. He um, does. And all all indications suggest that he's been looking good all summer. Um, you just gotta like, you gotta like what the Raptors bring to the table, man. Kawhi can guard. Danny Green can guard. They had the best bench last year mm-hmm. okay. um, with Fred Van Fleet and Delon and those guys. Uh, you got Pascal down there. You still got Serge, oh. and then you got OG. You know, it's it's just like I don't know how you score on the Raptors. Right. I mean, you got uh, Kyle Lowry at the one who's a dog. You know, I think they're going to be the dog. best. Yeah, they're going to be the best defensive team. Little in the pit league. bull. Uh, yeah. So then, who do you have in your fourth? So you have Raptors coming out. Then you yeah. have Boston. Yeah, Philly. Then Philly. Who, who's that for? Uh, that's you got Washington or you know what? Washington. Washington is the one team, man, that can like. You know, so you got they added they added my 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 man Austin. They added Austin Rivers, Rivers. Yeah, to man. the bench. Relax. Let's, oh, let's oh, not get disrespectful. <laughs> I'm just curious of where you added him to in your head. Oh, man, I think six man or seven. Six man, man come on, man. Uh, he averaged 15 a game last year for us. He's who's going in friend. for it though. I got a strong backcourt. I'm saying y'all like you're a Washington fan, but they no, got a strong backcourt. No, yeah. So Washington, they just got a lot of pieces, man. Dwight's there now. Uh, Dwight, he kind of rebounded. Uh, he was big last year. Um, Dwight. You got Bradley Bill sitting there. John Wall just got to stay healthy. Um, you know, no disrespect to Ty Lawson, but like in the playoffs last year, he didn't even play in the league last year. And then in the playoffs, they had to play Ty Lawson. Yeah, That's how nice. depleted they were on the bench. You replace him with like a guy like Austin, who averaged 15 a game last year in the West for the Clippers. Uh, shot forty percent on threes. Yeah, they, they should be good. They, okay. I think they've got a chance to be a top four seed. Uh, you still got Indiana. Uh, Victor Oladipo's coming off mm-hmm. his best year as a pro. That's a bonus too. I think oh, he's gonna man, be really nice. Bonus, a bonus. And uh, what's the other guy? Miles Turner. Yeah, Miles, Miles Turner's Turner. uh, really growing up. Yeah, he played man. USA basketball this summer, so mm-hmm. he's yeah. he's really growing up now. So. Yeah, yeah. bonus. Like he's almost so seven feet strong. He can rebound. He's skilled. he's like that he new age big man. Like, yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's but he good. has that old school like from his dad. He'll play down low. Yeah, yeah. From his dad, that was a banger. Yeah, I think. I think Indiana is going to be good if Miles Turner and Sabonis, both of those guys, take another step. Uh, my dark horse in the uh, East is the Pistons, though. Um, Blake? Oh, yeah. Blake. Blake and Drummond. If Blake can stay healthy. Oh, what, what's the guard? Um, Reggie, Reggie Jackson. Jackson, yeah. You know, those three, I think okay. you know, they, they're pretty okay. depleted outside of those three. But, I mean, you hope Stanley Johnson can figure it out. They still got Reggie Bullock there who, you know, he can shoot it. Um, yeah, but if they stay healthy, man, whew, the sky's the limit. Yeah, I think they can win a round. I think they can make the playoffs and win a round. Uh, I think Blake Griffin is, uh, 
I mean, he's criminally underrated. I, I think he's casting the number one option right now. Mm-hmm. I don't think he is a number one option, but I think they can get away with it in the East. Uh, but yeah, Blake Blake puts up twenty three eight and five in a sleep. Right. Like like so you know he can he can he can make some things happen for Detroit. Uh, yeah, they're my. Switch over to the to the West. What do you think about the top four well, for the West? First, I just want to oh, ask like how. So you're you're a Clippers fan. Yeah, that, that's that's rare for yeah. LA. So like, what what made you not? It's not, not that rare. I that, feel like the people in the city are Clippers fans, right? Yeah, uh, it's rare, but it's not. You feel me? Like the six years in which we had CP3, Blake, and DJ did a lot for the city. Uh, Live city. Live city. That, <laughs> you know, RIP to that era. But yeah, that did a lot. I mean, we're obviously still um, under the Lakers, but uh, we're getting a new arena in Inglewood. Um, there's a lot of new energy. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a Clipper fan until I die, man. Or how did that? Was it like a family thing, or did you just like not want to be yeah. like everybody else? Uh, uh, I think it was kind of ingrained in me now that I think yeah. about it, because like growing up, you know, like we were talking about earlier, basketball was such a big part for me. Um, I played junior Clippers. Like I, I was mm. a junior Clipper, like all the way up into high school. So that's kind of how you. Build fans, you go oh, out to the yeah. community, and you and then like so like back to them. you're growing up as a junior Clipper, and you're playing every week with the Clipper on your jersey, and then you watch and you're like, oh man, I hope they do well. You know what I mean? You start rooting for them, right? And so yeah, man, just growing up like '98, '99, I remember Maurice Taylor and Old McCandy, and then you know we kind of graduated to almost being a playoff team with Lamar Odom and Quentin Richardson and Darius Miles. Oh and yeah. There you go. I remember that. And then <laughs> we actually became a playoff team when we got Cassell and Mobley and Ellen Brand was 20 and 10 in his sleep. And then there was some down years after that. And then we got Blake and Eric Gordon and uh we used those guys to kind of get Chris Paul and then that was the golden age of DeAndre. DeAndre who was you know, nobody expected him to become what he's become for a second rounder. Like, he's kind of maxed out. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, he he, he achieved all his potential for somebody on, that's man. not that skilled. No offense. He does his job well. He, he, uh, it depends on paint. how you define skill, though. You know, setting great screens is a skill. Well, you know Maybe. what I meant, like, as, as far as, like, touch with the ball. Like, and shot. Shooting, free ball throw, handling, and, yeah, yeah, post a, moves, all that. But, yeah, he does his job. I'm not, I'm not saying he doesn't do his job. I'm talking, he does his job of protecting the paint. Yeah. Rebounding, offensive and defensive, mm-hmm. setting monster screens and rolling like he yeah. does his job. But I thought I, last year was very telling for DeAndre Jordan. Man, he um, I think I, I saw a stat the other day. I, I like without without Chris Paul, Milos was our point guard. He was in and out. We didn't really have a point guard all year, and mm-hmm. he still was a monster. Uh, he still he still led the league in lobs. He was a monster last year still. So. Um, Kind of goes to show you how talented we were at our peak. The Clippers were. So I think it was kind of like that. That lineup sort of reminded me of like a ni- a really good '90s team, like w- the the Chris Paul, okay. JJ, um, Redick, um, whoever their three was at the time, Matt Barnes know. or Luke. yeah, because yeah. it was like. It seemed like like nowadays the NBA is so versatile, like it's very positionless. Like you look at like the Warriors, where like you kind of have your point guard, and then everybody can kind of switch it's off. Fun. Whereas like the Clippers reminded me of like okay, you got your point guard. Chris Paul's like the only guy I want bringing the ball up. Then right. your shooting guard is a pure shooter, you and your dribble. bigs are like true bigs. So it's like it was it, they kind of I always compared them to the Jazz team of the nineties. Um, mm. You know, because they had their point guard. Stockton was Chris Paul, Carl Malone was Blake, Blake. and Ostertag was uh, DJ. But, like... No offense. <laughs> no, I mean, they're, like, they're both in big terms bodies. of roles. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm messing with Whereas you. Whereas it's I'm not like that, like, new age of mm-hmm. switchability and, and right. versatility. I think... I, and I think Doc and... and I think they all realize that. But it's kind of tough to, like, assemble a team like that when you're paying Chris Paul... Max, then you max out DJ, then you max out Blake. You kind of can't really find those guys to make a team like mm-hmm. that. So we were kind of in a bind where you just kind of like, okay, we do have an elite t- two guard in JJ Reddick at what he does. Mm-hmm. And they got one of the best point guards ever in Chris Paul. Uh, like I said, Blake Griffin is Blake Griffin when he's healthy. 
you kind of just got to roll with it and hope that some breaks fall your way. But yeah, I don't, I don't think in our at our peak we were fit to like compete with like the Golden State Warriors or when KD was on the Thunder. And we were talking so. about it on a different episode like I think people want to call Chris Paul a choker in the playoffs. I don't think he is. I think he's good in the playoffs. You know, I just think he gets hurt. He's just injury prone. You know what, man? I'm at the point now when when it comes to basketball, if you really say something like Chris Paul is a choker, yeah. Um I don't even discuss it because like as a as a Chris Paul fan, he's my second favorite player ever outside of Allen Irish. As a Chris Paul fan, you're automatically biased. I'm not biased. I'm not biased. <laughs> Cuz I I pride myself in being able to like assess what the line? certain things without you know letting my personal feelings interfere it's just it's impossible to call Chris Paul a choker because if you call Chris Paul a choker like what are we defining as choker here because is he a choker when we were down 2-1 in San Antonio and we needed a win before going down 3-1 to the defending champs he had like 35-9 and nine? or when he had like 25 in game 7 on one leg against the Spurs you know, that what game I mean? winning shot over Duncan. Right. So you know, hey, I could I could go on. Like he's had he has he's had performance against the Lakers in the playoffs. It's kind of like Chris Paul falls in line with other great NBA players, where like all of every NBA players has moments where you know they're not as bright in 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 the clutch. Right. Um, he definitely has his faults, but to call him a choker kind of shows how much you know about basketball. Yeah. And I mean that in the most respectful way if anybody calls Chris Paul a choker in the playoffs. Like, well, I was just saying, like, how many times has he just gotten hurt in the playoffs? Like, I well, think that's yeah. the that's the more accurate tag is yeah, injury you know. prone yeah, rather yeah, than yeah, choker. You know. Yeah. I mean, some of them, like, I know before, before uh, last season um, when he had uh, his thigh thing with the Rockets, I know one of the years the last year where we were, or the second to last year with Blake and CP, uh, he kind of like went for the ball and like kind of got his hand caught and like mm-hmm. broke his hand in Portland. Right. Uh, like that, those are freak accidents. Yeah, you know, but yeah, you can't escape it. He definitely gets injured. Um, I think, you know, that's like the biggest what if in NBA history, I think, at this point. You know, mm-hmm. the Warriors have won three out of four. And, I don't you know, know that season. Kyrie, I mean, um, Kawhi thing is a big what if, too, when he got hurt. Yeah, but, but even if Kawhi doesn't get hurt, you never saw, like, the Warriors that vulnerable. Like, the Rockets, through, like, six games, right. really looked better than them. You right. know what I mean? You had you had Chris Paul playing great, great basketball. He was he was making some incredible shots that series. You had the MVP in James Harden. They had won 65 games last year. And the one thing that Spurs team didn't have, which I think is the most important thing in terms of beating the Warriors, is home court. Home court advantage. Right. Yeah, the Rockets so, yeah. had home court. They had game seven at home. They had the first two at home. So they were really in position to beat the Warriors. And, you know, the Chris Paul injury just sucks, man. But, yeah, I think. Uh, a lot of that's going to happen this year, too. They're going to have to figure that out because they're going to need Chris Paul to play 35, 38 minutes a night come so, playoffs. So what do you think about the addition of Melo? Do you think he needs to come off the bench? Do you think he needs to be in the starting lineup? Or I think Melo needs gonna to do? go somewhere, man. I don't, I don't starting lineup, bench, neither. Just <laughs> go to another team. Now, nah, you know what? I'm joking, but Carmelo, I think he should be better. Because he's playing with two real point guards and James Harden and Chris Paul, two guys who really look to make the play. But yeah, man, I, I just don't see him moving the needle in terms of getting them closer to like beating the All Warriors. Right, so Andy says this a lot. Um, you think the loss of um, Ariza? Yeah, Ariza and huge. Uh, Luke. Yeah. Huge. Uh, Luke. Yeah, Luke. Was yeah, Luke and Bob Moose. Moose. I was yeah. more focused on Ariza because but that, that combination of those mm-hmm. two, the defense, mm-hmm. you say, isn't worth what Melo brings offensively. It's well, not even. At the end of the day, for the Rockets to, I mean, whatever the Rockets do against any other team, it's going to come down to Western Conference Finals versus Warriors. Point. That's all it is. That's, it. that's, that's why really everything yep. is just a prelude to that Western Conference Finals matchup. So the question is, how do you match up against the Warriors? And I would say after Kawhi Leonard. Trevor Ariza is one of the best Durant guarders in the NBA. One of. Yeah. Um, so that was a big factor in why they kept it competitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, we, I now said, they don't I tell, have that. I tell people all the time, man, the biggest reason why the Rockets went up 3-2 on the Warriors is because they had the 
you know, that's Steph Curry, that's KD, and they had the Warriors score like ninety four points, right? <laughs> right. Points like they were they were guarding, and yeah, like he said, man, um, Chris Paul played fifty games last year, right? The Rockets still won sixty five games. To put it into perspective, how good that trio of Capella, Harden, and Chris Paul was last season. I think mm-hmm. counting the playoffs, they lost like what six times all season, seven times, some crazy number right. like that. Um, so yeah, in theory, if they're healthy. I don't see anyone beating them four out of seven times unless they're named the Warriors. So it all comes down to the Warriors. Uh, can Carmelo Anthony, he's not going to be good defensively. You know, he's going to be fooled defensively. So it's going to come down to can you make enough shots to keep you on the floor? When you um, need them. And can you right. not take shots away from other people? Uh, that's always been his thing is the, the ball stopping and disrupting the team's offensive flow. See, I, hopefully he becomes a that catch has shooter. Been, that has been his thing. I don't think it was as much of a thing with OKC, though. I, I actually thought offensively with OKC, he didn't fit terribly. He just didn't make shots. And at this stage of his career, as a stretch four, if you're not going to make any down, shots, yeah. there's no real need for Carmelo to be on the floor. So I think it's real simple for Carmelo. He's got to be able to make shots. Like, you know, everybody likes to talk about like, hoodie mellow, Olympic mellow. Right. Like, you know, mellow makes shots. He's a scorer, right? And, like, if you're not going to make shots and you're not going to guard, like, what there's no real the need for you to be on the court. Right. That's why I said um, he'll be better over the course of 82 games, but I just don't like him against the Warriors mm-hmm. one bit. So, okay. I mean, we'll see him. We'll see. Uh, so who's your top four in the West then? Oh, Warriors one? Warriors one, Rockets two, uh, probably OKC three, mm. and what, Jazz four? Okay. Really? So not a lot of faith in uh, the Lakers or LeBron. You think I those teams a, are better than LeBron? The Lakers. Oh, let's, let's all right, hot let's take go. it then. Hot take it. Hold on, transition. So, so what? Like, real quickly, mm-hmm. break down your your third and fourth place in the West and why you have them there over your hot take Lakers. Uh, well, OKC last season, um, I thought they matched up. At one point, I thought they matched up better with the Warriors than the Rockets did okay. in terms of you know Russ, Paul George, Stephen Adams. Andre Robertson was huge for them. At, when he went out, they were, like, the best. They were running teams off the court the way they were guarding. Um, I think they can just switch everything. They beat they, the Warriors a couple times when Melo was hurt. That's right. actually, outside of Melo, that was a that's one of the, stacked defensive yeah. team. That's one yeah. of the reasons why I think they'll be better this year because they don't they have Melo. Yeah. You know, they <laughs> added Dennis Schroeder. They got the best backup point guard in the league. I think they're going to be dangerous. Uh, Utah. Utah was just so... I think Utah's positioned to be just a second round team and that's it. Right. But I think they're just so good defensively, man. Rudy Gobert, Mike. And their home court advantage is crazy too. Like crazy in Utah. You know what I mean? I think they just everybody plays their role so well. They know whose team it is. Mitchell is a absolute so, so, beast. Yeah, like so everybody he was a surprise. just fits their role. He was a surprise last year. You think the teams would be more prepared for him, or do you think he'll still be but they can be prepared, but he's he's, he's gonna do his thing. Man. Yeah, I'm just like, you I'm know, curious. he's you, as he's a rookie last year, so you got to anticipate that he's going to take another step this year. Uh, Rudy Gobert, stuff. Rudy Gobert, how many, I got to look, but the Jazz, had, they were fourth in the West last year, and they won like 50 games. Right. Uh, but you got to understand, they were 19 and 29 at one point. Rudy Gobert comes back, and I think they lost like seven games the rest of, they were yeah. so good last year when Rudy Gobert was on the floor. So you got to anticipate Rudy Gobert is healthy. They're going to be right there. Um, yeah, and in terms of the Lakers, I, I, are they at least five? No, Sheesh. no, they're. Ooh. I don't think they're five. I don't know they, if they, they don't make, make the playoffs. playoffs. I don't oh, know if they okay. make the playoffs. Well, let's, we Wait, hear what? That. That's a terrible take, Maul. Come really? on now. So they don't are, make the playoffs. Are the Lakers better than any of those four teams I mentioned? Yeah, LeBron yeah. by himself is better than yeah, two I'll of take those teams. Outside of everyone but the Warriors and Rockets, yeah, I think right. LeBron by himself puts him <laughs> right. above. So, so, yeah. so, so, let's let's well, go with the hot hold takes. On, hold on. <laughs> let's let's go into that, right? All right, let's, let's go, go into that. <laughs> last down, season, first. last season, can we agree that Kevin Love is be, is better than everybody on the Lakers, not named LeBron? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I don't even think that's a discussion. Last year in the East. LeBron James played all 82 games. He led the league in minutes, and they still didn't win 50 now, games. Love in missed the East. a lot of time. He did. He did. He did. However, in the Eastern and Conference. And they had so much flux, too. Like, with the two teams. Yeah, all right. Thomas so, they basically switched and, out two teams. They kept. Okay, I feel you. But 
They switched out this. So what do I, you think? Have you seen the Lakers roster? That's flex right there. That like Ingram I think the needs main the ball. Players are... Kuzma needs the ball. Lonzo Ball is only good on the ball. Rondo needs the ball. I don't like their team con- like as presently constructed. I don't see like who's the second best player on the Lakers. Probably, probably. Uh, we'll see. I think if Kuzma steps up, it might be him. Oh, man. Or CP. See, but see, uh, you look know. at you. See who's what? the second best player on the Rockets? Who's the second best player on the Warriors? Who's the second best player on the Spurs? Who's the second best player? I mean, LeBron. But LeBron, Le- Le- a twenty-two-year-old version of Le- a twenty-two-year-old version of LeBron went to the finals with Mo Williams as his second best player in the East. Like, like that. I, I don't. I don't think people understand. Like. The East if is, we're, if the we're, West is just top heavy. Those other teams. See, you think they're are, top heavy, but like the Nuggets didn't make the playoffs last year. Mm-hmm. Are the Lakers better than the Nuggets? With LeBron, LeBron by himself is better With than whoever yeah. they put on the court. See, see, I guess that's where the disconnect comes in because I, you don't I give LeBron that much credit. I think LeBron James, if you told me LeBron James is the best player in the league, you won't have an argument with me. Mm-hmm. However, I don't think LeBron James is some magic trick. Like, you can't just put him in the roster with a bunch of guys who can't shoot and think they're going to be better than the Timberwolves if they're if the Timberwolves are healthy or the Nuggets or the Jazz or the Rockets or the Spurs or the Warriors. Like, I'm not saying – I don't think they will. Um, I can guarantee you – I can – not guarantee, but, like, I can see the notion that if LeBron's on the team, he's going to make the playoffs. I just think it's going to be close. It's going to be tough. If they do – So you think he's 6, 7, 8? If they, if they make the playoffs, they're going to be fighting for it. Six, more so seven or eight for sure. I yeah. think you, you Unless got, they make something com- happen. At compared to that Cavs team, which you brought up love, missed mm-hmm. a lot of games, um, like Phillips said, had all that flux, all that um, just chemistry they basically, issues – Kept two players, LeBron and, and Love, and then switched out every other player and switched in every other player. Like, <laughs> and you get, you got to look at. Um, I, I mean, I think defensively, they're a lot longer, more athletic, so and switchable well, like than the Cavs team. They, I think they have a better makeup. They can match up with teams a lot better. Their point than the guard six team. seven. You put Ingram in, he's six nine. Put LeBron in, he's six eight. Um, you keep going well, LeBron up. doesn't guard anymore. Let's, well, let's acknowledge that. Because you have to think, do so much on offense. I think so you get Rondo on and Lonzo to take on some of those ball handling duties. He doesn't have to carry the team offensively. We might see some more defensive effort. Right. Maybe, but I find it hard to believe LeBron in his 16th season is going to all of a sudden let somebody else handle the ball and make plays. I, I, I don't I don't see like that's what LeBron does. He, so he needs so to. then if he doesn't, then his two point guards aren't even of use, basically, because they can't score. They yeah, really have the ball. That's my point. That's my point. Like, they're, 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 the team doesn't make any sense. Like, they're starting JaVale McGee at the five. No disrespect, but, like, bro, come on. Like, if we're really serious about, like, where do you think the Lakers are going to be? Top four? Three. Huh? <laughs> Three? Uh, three, yeah. Oh, man. That, it, as presently constructed. Yeah. Y'all believe in LeBron that much? Because it has to be the belief in LeBron, right? Because I believe the- I believe in I like Rondo a lot. I think that's a really good signing. I like um, I like the fact that this is the first time. Le- Le- LeBron has played with Kyrie and Dwayne Wade. Those are the best players he's ever played with, right? Yeah. Great players, great scorers, not great passers, not great distributors, right? LeBron, we we talk about you know how how good LeBron is as a passer, a playmaker, all that. He's mm-hmm. never had someone to make passes to him. He's never had that great Playmaker. passer to feed him on cuts, to feed him on lobs, to find him when he's open. And now he has two of them. See, um, One of them, and LeBron, one of the smartest players of all time. Agreed. Rondo, one of the smartest players of all time. Agreed. And Lonzo is one it's of the more smarter players of this, uh, one of the young, smarter, younger players. Whew. Yeah, see... That's, that's another hot take with Lonzo. I don't think by this, by this time next year, at least, I don't see him being a Laker. I, I think Lonzo didn't have mm. enough targets and have enough good players around him for people to notice how good his vision and passing really is. We'll see. I With Lonzo, it's just I'm not really big on a point guard in 2018 that can't break down your defense. and at, Like, he's a willing passer. Mm-hmm. I, I think that kind of gets confused when people talk about Lonzo in terms of, like, he's such a great passer. He's such a great playmaker. Lonzo doesn't really make plays. He just gives up the ball. You know what I mean? Like, he he doesn't really, like, look at all of the elite point guards in the NBA today. When you talk about Chris Paul, Steph Curry, Damian Lillard, Russell Westbrook, 
uh, even Kyle Lowry, you know what I mean? All those guys, all those guys make plays, you know what I mean? And um, all those guys make plays for others. Uh, Lonzo doesn't really do that. He kind of just gets the ball and gets off the rock quick and kind of just he doesn't play pick and roll. He doesn't he doesn't really do anything out there other than like miss shots. He's a great rebounder for his size, but I'm I I, I don't I don't see it. and then especially with uh, LeBron James there now. Um, yeah, it's it's gonna be tough. I don't see I how think, that works. I agree that he's not like a great on his own and that like he can't carry a team or anything. He needs to have other good players around him mm-hmm. to make his passing look good. And now one of his targets is LeBron James. Yeah, but LeBron James is gonna have the ball. Well, I I think I don't I think he's smart enough to know that when he wanted Rondo to come and that by joining Lonzo. And in his older age, I think yeah, he was kind of. I think he was kind of tired of, of having to do everything. So I think he's understanding. Like I in my old him. age, I'm gonna have to adjust, kind of like how Magic did. So we might see him in the post more. We might so, see him cutting more. So why, if you if you really felt like that, why not go play with James Harden and Chris Paul, which he said he almost did, or go play with Ben Simmons in Philly? You go to the Lakers, who because he wanted to be out in L.A. and stay close to his kids. He was going to school in L.A. In his words, he, he'd rather he'd decision. rather build something than just join a team that was already. Because I think joining Houston would be like one up. That's the, too similar to what KD did. Yeah. You know, that's a one up of KD. I mean, that's a lot of off the court stuff in terms of his kids and all. That. I'm just saying on the court, if you're looking for someone to take the pressure off you, I'm picking Chris Paul and James Harden over. Lonzo Ball and Ingram yeah. and Kuzma, who who they they aren't bad or anything. They're just like a few seasons away, and LeBron's already in the 16th season. You know, basically what I'm saying. He's wasting time. He's not or it's a non basketball decision. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a non basketball decision because on the court, you can't say that. You know, I vividly remember him saying it's all about championships, and I'm trying to win. And you don't go to Houston or Philly. Like, you went to the Lakers. The Lakers aren't winning the championship this year. I told you what I think. What do you think they can maybe get Kawhi, Clay, Jimmy Butler, whoever? And then let's say, hypothetically, they get Kawhi next year. Then do you think they have a chance? Um, (laughs) Yes. To win it all or just to be good? To win it all. So what do you think think about Luke Walton in the coaching situation? He's got LeBron now who is... Basically the same age as him, mm-hmm. probably maybe even smarter than him. Like, no offense to Luke and his coaching capabilities, but smartest um, guy to ever play in the NBA, LeBron James. And then you got a bunch of young kids who, well, Luke their, is, one of their dads said that they lost, that he lost the team last year, so. Yeah, that was, he, that's a side note, but LeVar is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he's terrible for that. But, uh, yeah, he's going to have his work cut out, cut out for him for sure when you have. You think he's the right fit, or? Uh... I think he is, but we'll see. I mean, I mean, he already had he's already worked with superstars mm-hmm. in in Golden State, so he knows how to. But the system keep was already there. Happy. What the system was in planning, he just had to hold the reign steady. It's just going to be you interesting know, to see how he makes his own system. Yeah. He at least had he at least got the experience of watching it get built. I think the yeah. difference though with Golden State though is like you know Steph was a season pro right, uh, Draymond Green was a season pro, and it, all those guys, Clay Thompson, and stayed season, in school, season pros, champions. You're dealing with a lot of guys with the Lakers here who like Lonzo's coming off his rookie year, Kuzma's coming off his rookie year, Ingram, Ingram is only two years, years in, in the league, and he's on still only twenty. Right, 21. and then on top of that, all of those guys need the ball. Um, you got Rondo, who's gonna look at it from a certain way. LeBron's gonna yeah, look at it a, from a certain way. Tech, uh, yeah, quote it's, unquote, coach problem. Rondo. And you does. got um, what's it called? And then just two of the biggest off the court headlines are always gonna be Levar Ball and LeBron James. So he's gonna be dealing with that too. And then if you can corral Lance Stevenson, uh, like it's like that's why I'm saying when you factor all of that in, I just don't really like the situation with the Lakers. However, I have a half of mind to believe it won't be look they LeBron can't, makes everybody buy in. You can't buy in into making a better shooter. Like like these guys can't shoot. Like I the think, court I is gonna be so small when the Lakers play. I, I I I I gotta see it to believe it. Put it like that. But I also believe. I think that. a lot of shots will fall when you have LeBron LeBron James driving to the to the rim and everybody sags in. You kick it out. And to Lonzo. Lonzo has a better time to shoot a shot. He shot forty percent in college. Bro, because but do you realize you realize he was one of. 
the worst shooters in Last the NBA year. in history. Yeah, I agree. But if he was the only one on the team. He wasn't the only one on the team, though. Who, who else they had last year? Ingram shot it well last year. Kuzma shot it well last year. So I think those guys uh, are more suited to like benefit from LeBron James's penetration and dishing. But guys like Rondo and, and Lonzo, like that's they can't shoot. Right. And and so it, it's just gonna shrink the floor so much, which is why uh, I got I have half a mind to believe by February the team won't look like this. Right. Like it then you put in JaVel McGee at the five who can't do anything outside of five feet. I don't like I said, there's potential there with for the Lakers defensively. Offensively though, I, I just gotta see it function. I, I don't I don't see it working. Well I think this first year is gonna be a feel out year, which it always has been. Mm-hmm. The first when LeBron first joined the Heat and first came back to the Cavs, it was clunky that first year. So there's no reason to expect it to be different. They both made the finals too. But yeah, I mean, but that's even like LeBron making the finals. Like that's even, that's how high the standard is for him. Is that like it? It still like can be clunky and he'll make the finals. So but like, though, bro. I'm saying, but I'm saying like that was the feel out year. It's it's playing with LeBron is a huge adjustment for everybody. So I think this first year, no one's delusional enough to think it's a championship team. Um, but I think this is that feel out year. Let the young guys develop. Then bring in a superstar next year, and I then this there, we're, then we're talking. He's in the 16th season. Uh, are we are we really trying to fit? Like, how much time you has want? He, has, has he shown any signs of slowing uh, down? Uh, he actually has. Um, if you dive deep uh, into it, if you dive deep into it, but like, yeah, statistically he hasn't. But a real big difference with those guys is like when he went to Miami. Uh, D Wade was an All NBA first teamer. Chris Bosh was an All NBA guy. Uh, when he came back to Cleveland, uh, Kyrie Irving was Kyrie Irving. Right, like these are when they when he came when he came to those teams, those guys were bona fide stars. Mm-hmm. He's coming to the Lakers, and I asked you earlier, like, who is the Lakers' second best player? And that might seem like a trivial question, but in the West, that's a real that's a real issue. Like in the NBA, like the Warriors got four, right? Like the Rockets, Clint Capella got back. Like Clint Capella is almost an All Star. That's right. three. Like you need. You need multiple guys that can go. And but to, to that point, you got Draymond Green, who would looks great around the Warriors players. Mm-hmm. Clint Capella looks great when he's playing off of Chris Paul or James Harden's pick and roll. Right. If you put either one of those guys on the Lakers last year, they wouldn't have. We would barely ever talk about him. Draymond Green on Lakers last year would have been a complete afterthought. So would Clint Capella. So who's to say that whether it be Kuzma, Ingram, Lonzo, whoever is not going to take that big step up just by playing around a star and benefiting the same way Capella and Draymond do? Because they're not great players on their own. Um, No, they're not. Uh, And I I can see that. But I ask you, who do you think is going to take that next step? And mind you, like... Those guys are young, so like, how much of a step do you think they're gonna take this year? Like, you can't, you can't think that Kuzma and Ingram and Lonzo, they're gonna take a big step, all of them at the same time. I, I just don't think there's enough touches for that to happen. I, I think if I had to pick someone right now, just because of the way they play in Ingram? relation to LeBron, I was gonna say Kuzma. Um, I I'm, a, I'm more of a Kuzma guy than an Ingram guy. I think Lonzo is gonna be good. But to your point, he's just not going to get the touches. But I think when he does, it's just going to take pressure off LeBron. Right. Big year for Lonzo. Big year for Lonzo. He's got... Uh, so you think it's a make or break it? Either it's going to be traded or made possibly out there? Oh, yeah. I, look, man. And on top of that, Lonzo has real problems with his knee. Um, I think it's definitely... He's definitely on the clock, man. If the Lakers... This is my opinion right here. But, like, if the Lakers really felt that strongly in Lonzo, you don't... You don't go get and a, get Rondo, yeah, right? Rondo, so yeah. I think at the end of the day, what the Lakers see, which is what what I see, which is if you really need a point, like you you have LeBron James who plays the point, Ingram, Ingram did, plays a lot well, of the yeah. point. Like if you really need a point guard, you can go find one in free agency like Rondo. Like you can find that. Like Lonzo is just like we were talking about this in the barbershop last week. Like he's kind of the elephant in the room because it's like he he's not. There's nothing really that he provides that you can't find anywhere else. Like, you try and force this 
Like, he has this transcendent passing ability. But it's like, bro, you're not going to have the ball. You have to be able to make shots at this point because you're not going to have the ball nearly as much as you're going to need to. And Or they're going to sag off your hands and then. You know what I mean? So, like, Lonzo is the one. I think he's going to be the odd man out. Uh, a lot of people don't even realize that how many minutes he played last year as a rookie. He played a ton. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's like when you average 10 a game, on like 30%, you shot 40% from the free throw line. Uh, if you dig deep into the numbers, like I said earlier, he was horrible in pick and roll. He was horrible at finishing at the rim. He was just so bad across the board that it's like, you know, those are areas that you kind of don't improve in once you become a pro. Like, you kind of get better at what you're already good at. Mm-hmm. But, like, if you haven't been able to dribble and break the defense down all your life, you're definitely not going to do it now when LeBron James is on the court. You know what I mean? So, but this is all, like, preliminary stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we'll see. I mean, it could – and I guess in a weird way it could work. But, like, just looking at it optically, it doesn't look good for mm-hmm. me. So, that's why – that's one of the reasons why I don't think the Lakers – are going to make the playoffs as presently constructed. Okay. So. Okay. So, um, yeah, just for the sake of time, uh, let's move on. Um, we always just want to ask, um, mm-hmm. what's uh, just what's a piece of advice that you have for young players or uh, or young musicians, for that matter? Um, what would you say? You know, something that's helped you in your career. Or just what's something they should know. Um, I would say just. From my experience, perspective, um, I would say find it early. The earlier you find it, better. Commit to it early. Um, I, I'm just looking at it, just looking at it from my, my vantage point in my life, whether it's music, whether it's basketball, anything in life, find something you love, and the earlier you commit to it, the better, because it's going to take work. Mm-hmm. And... If you can fall in love with the process at an early age, uh, it won't even feel like work as you go, as you like get older or whatever. Um, you know, I often wish that I took music seriously um, earlier. Uh, I wish I committed to basketball. Like I was kind of just good because I played a lot, mm-hmm. but it's not until like like my senior year I played against Demar, right and. You, you look at him and you're like, oh, man, he looks like he spent his whole life in the gym. Right. Like, my, my coach in high school, my coach in high school, uh, he told us a story about how, like, Jamal Crawford went to our school. Mm-hmm. And he would tell us how he coached Jamal. I just saw him up in Spokane. Yeah, man. Cool dude. Real cool dude. And he would say how, like, Jamal would literally not go to school. He wouldn't go to school. And he would just go because, like, we have a basketball gym. Mm-hmm right next to our school it's a park and he would skip school and just go play all day he would play from like eight to three and then come back and practice and go to practice right and i'm not i'm not advocating anybody to like skip school or anything like that but it just shows you the level of dedication it takes right. to get to where you want to go um so you got to be willing to fall in love with the process and i think it's easier to fall in love with the process if you commit early mm-hmm. a lot like if you teach a baby how to swim when they're like two or three or however right. old it is when they're like older it won't be a problem so yeah man i would say commit early um fall in love with work you know what i mean you know me and my brother we always have this saying where it's like you know i would love to play at staples center at 7 30 at night and mm-hmm. you know have karuchi on the like court side right. watching us play but do you want to wake up at 6 a.m and go running and then go like hit the weights and right. then go work out on your game just you to do it outcome. all again. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, commit early. Um, commit to the process early. Uh, grow with the process. Um, yeah, if you if you do that, you give yourself a really great chance to achieve greatness in whatever it is you like love or whatever it is you want to do. So yeah. that would be my advice. That's a good word. And you want to just uh, tell everybody a little bit about, like, what your musical style is like, what they can mm-hmm. expect, and then uh, where they can find some of your stuff. Um, in terms of my musical style, uh, I try and like create music from the most honest perspective as I possibly can. So, um, you listen to me, you're going to get a lot of me, Like You're going to know about like my mom, you're going to know about my brother, you're going to know about my experiences in school. Uh, it's kind of the only place I know how to write from. 
Um, so that's kind of like my big thing when I when I do rap. It's just like I don't know how to tell anybody else's story but mine. You know what I mean? And uh, whether it's like on a record where we can like talk about you know turning up and and enjoying life, or I can like transition and to talk about something more serious regardless it's going to be from my perspective it's going to be honest and yeah that's what you can get from me man um i'm on instagram uh instagram.com backslash j-a-m-a-l-c-r-i-s-t-o-p-h-e-r um on twitter same name um and yeah if anything else you can just google something will come up uh but yeah man that's you get stuff on like Spotify, yeah, and Spotify, Apple. Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, SoundCloud, wherever you go to like stream music to 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 get your music in 2018. I'm I'm there, you know. Hey. Uh, I make sure I make sure of that it's so, accessible to everybody. Yeah. yeah, man. We just we just put out a song uh, a week ago uh, called Caution. Um, that was kind of like my reintroduction to to the music thing. I hadn't put out music in months, so. Uh, that's doing well on Spotify. So you get to let them know. Yeah, man. Um, anywhere you go to get music, I'm there. Um, and uh, it's a it's a bit of a, a, a lot. it's a bit of a variety. Hey, what's the word? Variety. Variety. There you go. It's a bit of that. And so I'm sure if you like look up look up my catalog, you'll find something you like in there. And if not, you feel me? Hit that iTunes and find you another artist. <laughs> but I'm sure you'll find something you like though for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, awesome. A- anything else you want to touch on, Philip? Uh, all right, man. Andy, I just had a quick question, big dog. What's up? Who would you rather have, Reggie Miller? Here we go. Or Demar Derozan? Here, Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> can, can I add a precursor? No, you just let him answer his question. Yeah, then you can I throw mean, what you want to it, that's that's situational. What? That's, that's not the question. Who would you rather? Yeah. Have? Um. <laughs> you're, leaving, you're leaving so much out of it, though. This this is insane. <laughs> I'm uh, yeah, man. I, I I'm gonna take threes over mid range, so I'm I'm gonna go Reggie. All just, right, just that go way. ahead, go ahead. Uh, so wait, what, was what he I'm referring to? Was he, he was not there. Okay, That's so why what I had he's to ask referring him. to is we were we were talking about who Michael Jordan um was going through in yeah, his peak, peak, peak oh, years, right? Yeah. And I was saying how like. The two, the the guards, well, the wings in general that Michael Jordan went up against were trash. Not trash. They just pale in comparison to the ones of today. Yeah. And as an example, I was like, <laughs> Reggie Miller, the tear of players he's on, is a lot like what Demar is on right now. I, I agree that it's you know what I mean. Level. Like, yeah. like that, like. And then I went a step further, and I was like, if you really want to be real about it, Demar was the number one team in the Eastern Conference, and he averaged twenty eight a game as the number one option in the East. Yeah, Reggie Miller wasn't doing that. Reggie Miller had Rick Smiths. Reggie Miller had Mark Jackson. Now Demar had a great team, but yeah, that's what all I was yeah. saying was in general. Ray Allen's career stats trounce Reggie's, right? For sure, of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like. Michael Jordan and we would I think we could all agree that Reggie Miller was one of the better players that Michael Jordan had to go through mm-hmm. right right that should that's what I was saying like DeMar DeRozan is in that same tier of two guards right, right? Yeah. and he we wouldn't call him like one of the greatest ever. one of his biggest foes you yeah. know one of LeBron's you know biggest what I mean? foes like, like he's not he's not LeBron or Kevin Durant or Steph or Chris Paul or James Harden or even Gianna like well, he's not that guy yeah to your point like like Jordan's like the other two guards were like Reggie and Starks. Clyde Drexler and John Stark depending on the era but look at look at who LeBron faces at his own position come on the man. second the next best player in the world also a wing, Kevin Durant. Or Kawhi. And then Kawhi, arguably the third best player, also a wing. And, and then you Kawhi got Paul not, George, you uh, got, man. you know, Paul George. Got to put it into up. perspective, Paul George didn't make an All-NBA team last year, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Or if he didn't, it he definitely didn't in wasn't. the West, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, that was where I was coming from with that right, statement. Right. I, I kind of set you up with the Okie yeah, Doke. You know what I mean? It's not saying that like, DeMar <laughs> is better than Reggie Miller, although I don't even think that would be a stretch. I'm not the biggest <laughs> Reggie Miller fan. Um, he didn't play make enough for me, and he wasn't much of a defender. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. The right. point was that, you know, Reggie Miller is in a tier with DeMar DeRozan's of the world, and those guys aren't close to Jordan. So, right. You know. Okay. All right. 
Just throw it out there. I would. I, I wish OP and Steve was here. You should have saw him. And Steve blew a gasket when I said, like, <laughs> oh, DeMar. They, they wouldn't leave me alone about it, man. But I had your back, bro, that day. Did you? I don't even remember, man. You, you don't man. remember your... Uh, I just remember everybody coming at my neck, man. It was like... I, yo, I, was, I was rocking with you that day. Yeah, and they didn't, they didn't give me a chance to explain myself. You know, sorry, sorry. Well, that's fact, why I, I gave you the say, platform. I started off with a joke. And I would say that nineties, that nineties era, you had it was basically Jordan and a lot of big men, like pretty much outside mm-hmm. of maybe Jordan and Stockton. Really, all the other great players were you big men and, and Pippen. One. And then you could even argue that if you took out Jordan and then took out all the big men, the next best non-big player was Jordan's teammate Pippen. Yeah, I never look at it like that. But, no, there was definitely an influx of um, bigs, elite bigs in that time. We were talking about this in the gym the other day. Uh, Like, we were talking about, even from the 90s, the early 2000s, like, no disrespect to these guys, but, like, Jerry Stackhouse made the All-Star game in 2001. Michael Finley made the All-Star game in 2001, right? Devin Booker just averaged 25-5-5 and on efficient splits. (laughs) <laughs> while playing with one of the worst teams right. ever. Like, Devin Booker is better than those guys, and he wasn't close to making the All-Star game this year. Or well, Michael Red. You know what I mean? made the Olympic team. Kind of like, yo, he, yo Michael that. Red made the, the Olympic, Olympic team. team. Like, right. Michael Okafor made it. See, see, man. So, <laughs> so that's see, what, see, man. But I, I'm talking but about. we argue about it in the gym all day about which era. I'm not going to say it's better. I just say more talented. I'm going to say that people look at the past with rose colored glasses. Oh, talk, they think just because you, yeah. you could the tackle somebody system, out of yeah. the air, I mean, yeah. it makes it basketball better. Like, no, <laughs> that's not basketball. Tackling somebody is not uh, basketball. It wasn't tough, it wasn't physical. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Steph wouldn't do that to us. It's just like, why? On, because you could foul him better than we can? Like, I mean, how like, does that yeah, make I mean, you're better than Steph? Like, 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 like let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's take him out of the game. Let's be real here. If you're playing the Warriors, there's no, t- like, the greatest Laker team ever. We putting Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in pick and rolls, and what is he going to do out there? We putting Kurt Rambis in pick and rolls. <laughs> like, like you know what I mean? Like, I know I'm getting towards blasphemous territory right. here. But, you know, I one of the things I always say is, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm young, and a lot of people like to say that if you say something like that, it's because you're, you're a young? millennial yeah. or something like that. Like, no, I study the game. Uh... I like I I know a lot of people like to say like that oh one Lakers team that went almost undefeated in the playoffs if it wasn't for AI um, would be like one of the greatest teams ever and it's like bro if you really look at these rosters come on man right. like Shaq Ori Fox and George they got saved by Ori matter of fact he so. did but like Ori yeah. isn't pl- or Ori isn't playing in these in these days man like you know so. Ori is better than Jordan if you want to go by ring conversation. Yeah, that's why I don't. I don't really entertain. You want to go by rings? You know what I mean. Ori, I Ori's better than Jordan though. So, I don't but yeah, entertain. you know what I mean. Like I often say, like you know, the comparison between like LeBron and Jordan. I always say like I don't have a problem with people saying Jordan is better than LeBron. But if Le- if you're gonna say Jordan is better than LeBron, don't tell me nothing crazy about oh he got six rings, oh he's undefeated in the finals. I don't want to hear nothing like that. Tell me some concrete stuff because right. I'm a That's big team. believer in team. Right. Circumstance matters. Uh, you know, Jordan has never played against yeah. some of those Spurs teams LeBron played mm-hmm. against. He's never played against and, those Warriors teams, and, you know? You know, it, like people talk about he's undefeated in the finals. He's not undefeated in the playoffs. He's lost in the playoffs you know, plenty of times. In the first round, yeah. We, always, like, we always say, like, yo, Michael Jordan's career did not start in 91. Right, Kobe's career did not start in 2000 when he won the championship, uh, and it's like he did have a finals in 04 in which he hijacked the Lakers and they lost the finals, in big part because Kobe Bryant was like mm-hmm. awful and he just kept shooting the and, ball when he shouldn't. Have and when LeBron lost to the Mavericks earlier that season, the Lakers and Kobe got swept by that same team in the first round. But LeBron's a choker for Kobe, getting to the you. finals thank and you. losing. But Kobe's a clutch killer assassin for getting swept in the know, second round. It's crazy because Kobe Bryant, he ha- he has his moments for sure. But, you know, Kobe Bryant, um, for sure, he doesn't have as many great playoff moments as people think. Oh, like, no. If you really dive deep into it, uh, this is really big, like, statistical stuff. But, like, he has a lot of moments. This is what we were talking about earlier when we said Chris Paul was a choker. I was like, man... You know, if that's the case, then there's a lot of chokers out here, man, because, mm-hmm. like, 
you know, there's a lot of great players who have moments in which they came up short. Like, we're talking about LeBron James as being a top two, top three player of all time, and he's had moments where he, like, just straight shrunk. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just unacceptable moments. So, you know, everybody has everybody has their moments where they come up well, short. It's so much, like, a lot of legacies are defined by moments that have nothing to do with you. Like, you, you know, sometimes someone else will hit a game-winning shot, and that's the difference between you having two rings and three, you know? Um, it's just so, yeah. it's just such on the margins, man. That's why the championship conversations are always... You got to be careful, man, because, it like, like Steph Curry is going to end up with, like, three or four championships, but, like, for example, if Chris Paul doesn't get hurt, right? If, if Kawhi doesn't get hurt... If Kyrie doesn't get hurt, like that's why that's why I like you know I don't really think about championships like that, man. Because if you if you do, you'll drive yourself crazy. Because a lot of it is circumstantial, a lot of it is team. Now that it matters, but it doesn't matter nearly as much as people give it credit for. You know, like like a lot of people like to put Kobe in the judge. Um, I mean, I th- there's nothing wrong. Like it's a factor because at the end of the day, that's what you're trying to do. But it's like. I, I, I hate when people just don't take the time to look into the other factors that there went into go. the championship. So what was the supporting cast like? What was their competition like? You know, at what stage in their career were you they? Know, is, All we, that stuff. We pick and choose. We pick and choose um, what we want to, like, classify as greatness, what we want to classify as choking. You know what I mean? Like, especially with guys like the greater you are, like LeBron James. Uh, you pick and choose, so you want to say Ray Allen saved him, right? But you don't want to acknowledge that he had 18 points in a row in that fourth quarter to mm-hmm. get them to that point. You don't want see that's what I mean by clutch or a choker, right? So if LeBron James loses that series, is he a choker, or, or you know, did Ray Allen save him, or like are we valuing those 18 points differently? Like those 18 points don't matter as much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like that's coming up clutch too. Like your team is up against it and you have one of your better quarters in the history of your career, but you know, no one acknowledges that. So yeah, man, um, you know, uh great players are always judged in a weird way to me. But it's all good. Oh yeah. Well I think uh yeah, that's a good point to leave it off. Um yeah, I just really want to thank you for taking the time to, to oh, join man. us. Thank you, man. Um, thank you guys. Yeah, man. man sure. Any any final thoughts or anything you just want the people to know about? Uh, nah, man. Um, this was like my first little. Um, this was like my first podcast that I've ever done. Um, it's actually pretty interesting. Uh, I do appreciate you guys uh, inviting me on, man. It's uh, it's something that I look forward to doing more of. Uh, you guys are the homies, hey. and um, yeah, man. Uh, let's do it again. Yes, sir. For sure. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Box Out Basketball Podcast. Remember to check out our YouTube channel, website, and social media pages. Links to all are listed on the show notes. Here at Box Out Basketball, it's our job to give you the tools. It's your job to use them. And lastly, we want to close out this episode by... Uh, featuring a song uh, that Jamal was nice enough to give us. Um, You know, we've been listening to his music. We're both big fans. Um, We think, you know, he's got really bright future in this music industry, and it will blow up at any minute. Uh, So this is one of his biggest songs. It's called Caution. Enjoy, and make sure you look up Jamal Christopher on uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, titles, um, pretty much wherever you are listening to music, he can be found. Um, and enjoy the song. Yeah, it's like 10 in the morning and shit. But I always record in the morning and shit. On my Topanga Canyon, Rick Ross ball shit. Yeah, yeah, real game, yeah, yeah Getting everything I need and I need more I'm greedy, got people who need me I'm never selfish, I get more from helping Seven years and my niggas went in the wrong direction I'm in a different section We used to go play Uno over Virginians And now I don't know if my father is here in Virginia ah, That's neither here nor there 
never front, but good at pretending like I don't care. I'm still ballin'. Get on these records, cause I don't vent often. All my shit that drops should come with a proceed with caution. I find beauty in cruising past loss and falling deeper away from the kid who was always joking at seven. The love I'm missing is probably still up on Lati hair. But relationships growing old as you growing older. I'm 25 at the moment, time stolen, 30 before I know it. And now the niggas I trust got ulterior motives. And I'm supposed to act naive to it like I don't know it. I'm more than real, you more like Will. Treat Lynn like he Dr. Phil. Move while you standing still. Niggas is plying on me, guess I should play possum still. Man, I chill, but all you niggas on the clock for real. Yeah, I get a lot cause I give a lot. I'm never comparing my life, lift like the doors up on the McLaren. What good is a blessing if you don't share it? My mind start wandering to a place with less pressure, the better days. Remember, I was up in J dorm room like it was yesterday. Watched a video the other day and got a kick up out it She used to tell me her schedule and she would bitch about it But we don't talk, we can't even reminisce about it You wouldn't get me if I was to tell you all the stresses All of a sudden your private life is so interesting I get the picture, I got the vision, see double like sister, sister Used to spend my nights up at the days in Working towards a crib, I hardly do get to stay in I'm always on the road, I'm never home and you caged in Got million dollar toys, my closet is like a playbook Pen. I fall in love with bitches, but I don't be posting most of them I used to stand in line at parties, now I be hosting them Tell you about my night, but I don't remember most of it I ain't where I bet I end up, but I'm pretty close to it Tired of niggas talking and really got nothing to show for it, yeah Where your two cars, you told me you was a new star And everything you do hard, prove it, show me who you are I went to school with bad boys around me like Joe Dumas Stand pat and only do move if the money call in I'm all in, inspired by crushes on hate I seem to keep climbing the ladder while niggas fall in At times it's like this life was way better way up on TV I gotta get to NY, Kobe been trying to see me It's crazy when life happened exactly how you were planning Women you fantasize about, you start romancing But as quick as this shit came, the quicker this shit could vanish Don't hit me because you can, just call when you understand, friend